Welcome to the Nook of the Voluntary Virtues Network. I'm Steve. I'm here today with John, Britt, Riley, and Mike. And that's like the third week in a row. Yeah. I'm doing good. Smooth uh, sailing. <laughs> what are you drinking, Mike? Good job, Archon. Um, I am, Archon. I'm Steve the Archon. We established this months ago. We just haven't brought it up again. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I, rolled, I rolled this. I rolled it. I, it it's a uh, boatman. Uh, a uh, helmsman. What does that mean? It's it's Greek. Uh, helmsman is the guy that steers the boat. Okay. That's where it comes from. The Greek it's word for for it's Koine Greek. Okay. Helmsman. Yeah. Yeah. With an iron fist, so he's really very violent on certain days. The ruler. Off camera, of course. Well, there's a blackjack that comes out. Every now and then he's threatened. I have my thug the... just off camera yeah. in case any of you get out of line. There's been a show of brass knuckles once or twice. <laughs> Not, you know, implemented, but like, oh, you know, oh. Anyways, yeah. When, so when he, when he puts on that steel helmet, uh, <laughs> that stick with the spikes, <laughs> um, riding crop. <laughs> right. So I am drinking um, Sculpin by uh, Ballast Point Brewery, which is sellouts. Uh, sellouts, yes, but still one of probably the best beers you can get. It is. It's around. A, they it, they it, really it, do make it, good beers. It is all around wonderful. And I must say, although I hate that they sold out, mm-hmm. for a billion dollars, I might sell out too. <laughs> <laughs> if you walk into the your boardroom at your brewery <laughs> with with short sandals and a, and a t-shirt and somebody goes, here, this check for a billion dollars, hmm, right, so understood. But yeah, no, Sculpins are very good. It's also, they know how good it is, so they do charge extra for it. You know, your average six-pack of... Uh, of a, uh, you know, of a local brewery is normally nine eighty nine nine ninety nine in California. Not saying that we live in California, but I'm just giving you an example. Um, Sculpin has a tendency to be... Well, let's just say 13. San Diego, since, you know, it's a yeah, yeah, craft yeah. beer capital of the world. Yeah, yeah let's just say. Example. Let's just say that it, it has a tendency to be... Uh, 13 14 sometimes $15 if you go to the wrong liquor store. Mm-hmm. So. It's real. It's real life. Yep. It's delicious. <laughs> the struggle is real. The struggle is real. So is God. First world problems. That's not, let's not talk about that again. <laughs> <laughs> Who said Maybe. that? Who said that was, oh, David Bowie's wife said that. What? I think. Or whose wife said that? Someone's wife said that when they're on, their husband's on their deathbed. Yeah, I think that's David Bowie's wish said that when he was that the struggle is real and so is God. Mm. I just had to throw it out there. I heard it recently, sorry. Uh, All good. Anyway. I have to get off topic prematurely. Before we've even gotten on topic. Exactly. <laughs> Who is the topic? <laughs> Banks. 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 Like river banks? There we go. Yes. Okay, because river there's this river bank that I have in mind, which is so good. <laughs> <laughs> there's this bank I want to build a house on. <sighs> The, the the good kind of bank. The yeah. good kind of bank. No, we're talking about the bad kind of bank today. Um, well, unfortunately. Okay. Well, 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 let's let's make this. Uh, I, I mean, let's let, let, let's throw some some pepper onto this conversation. Um, Already, <laughs> is it necessarily by itself is a bank a bad thing? No. What is a bank? Well, well, yeah, let's start with what is a bank. Yeah, okay, so th- that's the thing, because we, we did an episode on central banking, which we're mm-hmm. going to get back into on this one for sure, but is the idea of a bank in itself a bad thing? Well, okay. well what do you mean by bank, though? Okay. A, 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 a service provider who holds on to, to your assets? Nothing wrong with that, obviously. Right. But when you get into some other things like fractional reserve lending and mm-hmm. Which is printing the, money, the norm standard, right, right. So, in a voluntary society, what are the odds in in you know the gentleman sitting here to all of you to the left of me? What are the odds of a um, a fractional reserve bank actually succeeding in a voluntary society. I I consider it somewhere on the edge of nil. It <laughs> wouldn't work. Nobody's going to be like, oh, this guy has a 10% reserve rate, really? Hmm. Huh. <laughs> you know, who's going to do that when you have... A, a, Who would you know, know if there, unless there was a run on the bank? 
Well, they they would have okay. So if they're going to lend out that Could sort you keep of keep something like that under wraps. Yeah, you would, no, yeah, you'd keep that under wraps, but there's no way that, like, somebody working for the bank is going to be, like, you know, some teller who isn't getting paid enough or doesn't feel like he or she is getting paid enough is just going to be like, hey, yo, they don't have money in there. <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's the way uh, the, the way the banks are today, uh, with uh, which are fractional reserve, but are also supported under the uh, Federal Reserve System. Um, legally that if you like reveal information about a bank that causes a bank run that's a federal crime so like so if you're teller x getting ten dollars an hour to just take people's money and you know write out some and script you know that in the back there's like yeah yeah if, some moths yeah if, if you <laughs> yeah if desk. you tell the guy who's giving you a, a chat or, or who, who's cashing his check for his his construction job I was that guy at the one point. The gold bars are filled with chocolate. Yeah, the gold <laughs> bars are filled with chocolate. Yeah, if you tell them that, you are responsible. And it causes a bank run. Technically, if they could prove it, which they can't, but if they could, you're legally responsible for causing a panic, and therefore that's a federal crime. Wow. So, yeah, like, so, yeah, poor teller who just got out of high school, whatever, and is okay with just taking checks and whatnot and writing some stuff off. If he or she says, hey, you know, really, we don't have any money back there, they can get a lot of trouble for that. And I'm pretty sure, without having worked at a bank, that they probably tell them something along those lines. Like, yeah, we, you know, it's probably pretty vague, but I bet you they tell them something like that. Like, hey, don't be telling people we only have 10% of what they got back there. So I don't what think other it's 10% what, anymore. What kind of other computing <laughs> systems uh, would be out there then? Hmm. Well, like, what do you mean by system? So, well, like in terms as opposed of, to in central, terms of a, like a bank, like a bank-like system, but not one that's based on fractional reserves. Well, we can or, look at the small banking era, right? Like in U.S. history, I don't think it's, it's a perfect system. But we can see where there was small independent banks competing. What are you saying? Small independent banks competing. Uh huh. Right. So, like. For instance, maybe uh, there was Georgia notes and South Carolina notes. Oh, right, 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 right. Or even within a bank within the same state, you could just freely exchange notes that were issued from that bank. And the pressure uh, from other banks and competition supposedly would keep them straight. But I don't know, that doesn't answer your question. I was adding in the you know that there is a we can analyze history that uh, that window after the the Biddle and Jackson feud, right? And then uh, uh, we had the small bank errors of bank error and banking error of U.S. history, and then we went into after Lincoln we had a, or actually excuse me until 1913. Are you aware of how things developed under that model? Okay. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say, John, you mentioned the 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 Biddle and in, in Jackson feud there. That it, it, I I'm aware of it, but it's a little bit of a more like obscure historical thing. If you could if you could, like just extrapolate on that a little bit, so yeah, you, you know, know it, I'm trying to think of the. It's been a long time too since I dug enough. into that too, right? Right. And, uh, but yeah, I think Money Masters was a was a documentary. Bill Still, yeah, yeah, right. That I, I listened to, and uh, what else? I read a few books in that era, but I couldn't reliably recall. From what I understand, I just know that that Jackson definitely uh, used was probably uh, the the model upon which present. And past presidents looked at, oh wow, we could look what this Jackson guy did and used to, you know, stretch the powers of the executive office mm -hmm. to do what he wanted to do, right? And he he uh, did some good things, but uh, definitely did some bad things too. Mm -hmm. He just did it because. Daddy, can you tell me? Yeah, he, Jackson was definitely not a saint, but it, you know, give credit where credit's due. Um, <laughs> It, it was without bullets fired a war against right. the the idea of a central banking system. Absolutely. The there was an attempted assassination on Jackson, and there is 
no doubt in anybody's mind, if you look at the situation, that the person who was paid to kill Jackson was paid by the banks to kill Jackson. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, an interesting side note about Jackson was that, so the guy had two pistols. The first shot missed, if I remember correctly, and the second, the second pistol misfired. Jackson saw this <laughs> and beat him with his cane. That's right. Like yeah, went up and started right, just yeah. beating him up yeah. to the point where like the people who were with him were just like, all right, hey, hey that's enough. You, <laughs> you've you done enough damage. Is that, is that where you earned it? <laughs> his name was Old Hickory, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought that was a name from uh, Fighting War of 1812. It probably is. Yeah, well, yeah I, think, I think you're right about that, yeah. Brad. Yeah. Um, actually, to uh, answer your question about uh, would there be fractional reserve banking in the voluntary society, mm-hmm. I think there probably would be. And uh, going back to the small banking era, you know, if you have small banks, mm-hmm. some will have you know a, a much higher reserve. Or it might even be up to 100%. Um, and then other ones would have lower ones. It doesn't have to be, you know, they get to set their own policy. You know, if you have a lower uh, reserve, uh, you're more likely to give loans to riskier loans, uh, higher interest rates. Uh, people who deposit will probably get higher interest rates. Yeah, you might get so a little bit more off your bonds. you might have um, to bonds. accept a lower interest rate for a safer bank. Um, so I, I think that, that definitely would be um, a lot more in a voluntary society. And th- if those banks fail, I mean, that, that happens. If virtual currency takes hold, then our banks are obsolete. As we know them anyway, right? I I there's been a lot of oh, churning so in the Bitcoin community lately. What do you mean? The market for guns has been asked for There's been a discussion about the size of the blockchain. Mm. Uh, right. I don't want to get too into it because that's not really what we're talking about. But Yeah, that's the, a whole the, half hour in itself. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. The, the, the down and dirty is the blockchain is one megabyte. Uh, each chain is one be- megabyte. Uh, uh, max, uh, usually actually around 700 kilobytes, and the amount of use that it's getting is approaching the limit. So there's an argument to keep it there because uh, it benefits a lot of uh, miners and, and people like that. But will it'll s- slow down? It'll slow down transaction times and increase the the verification transfer yeah. fees. Transfer fees, yes, yeah. thank you. Transfer fees if they don't, mm-hmm. uh, which could cause a problem and cause people to go away from it. And, mm-hmm. But so there's a big argument there, and lots of different yeah. people yeah. coming up yeah. on all sides to that yeah. issue. Would virtual currency make banks obsolete? Uh, I would certainly like to see that happen. Um, I think people still probably uh, would want to put their money in a safe place where they don't have to be responsible for uh, the security of their money and also so they can uh, transfer their their virtual currency from one to another depending on what they want to use it for. Uh, So there's still... That would be a market for something like a thing. I think it just the way it would massively transform banking okay. in the first place. Okay, that works too. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, I think I'm definitely uh, just pass it to you. <laughs> yeah, that, that definitely, um, and, and, and having the option of being unbanked at that point. And still being, uh, still going to work. And, uh, I think there'd still be a market for loans, though. I don't know. I don't know that uh, electronic currency, that uh, cryptocurrencies, that kind of thing, would solve that well, problem. That market, maybe, maybe though. Uh, there are um, sure. smart contracts. There's uh, uh, there are lending services out there. Uh, hmm. I'm actually invested in, in one right now. It's only one Bitcoin that I've invested, but they kind of break it off into uh, you know other ventures, and then I'm getting a little bit back. Uh, 
not the safest thing, but, <laughs> but yeah, that, that already exists. Oh, okay. So. Well, does that make them the big thing? Um, it's, it's, it's sounds like micro. It's, it's more. It's more. It's like it's, yeah. It's like micro loans. It's like it's more peer to peer than it, than it is uh, yeah, a peer to peer economy. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Angie. Oh, sorry. So, um, give your name away. Like yeah, banks uh, can't live with them, can't blow them up, right? It's to me like I, I think. <laughs> I, I didn't I didn't break any protocol. That was that was perfectly kosher. Um, and we'll talk later. Yeah. Um, why why so, so juice today? Well, no. So look at um, the 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 origin of modern banking is the exact same origin of central banking. It really is. I mean, if you think about where all the money was, it was in New York, London. Uh, Berlin, Paris, these major capitals, because this is where the seats of government were. Why? Well, not, uh, not that the, uh, excuse me, it's the other way around. The, the central banks ended up in, the, in these capitals because this is where it was an advantage for them to be. And they got that way because, you know, they had friends in high places. Uh, the, in league with the devil? Which one is the devil, though, that's in that one. scenario? Well, see, that's the thing. <laughs> Who, like, that, that's where it gets kind of interesting. Do the banks control the government, or does the government control the banks? Well, it's kind of interesting that we have all these... Uh, it seems anti- like a symbiotic relationship. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, we have all these uh, antitrust laws, but yet there are effectively four banks in the country. Effectively. I mean, there's you've got your smaller local banks, but for the most part, it's, it's, it's yeah, the- Chase... It's Bank of America, it's Wells Fargo, and it's, uh, what's the other one? Citibank. Citibank, thank you. Yeah, so you've got, that's about, those are your options. And your local bank probably is going to last like maybe five years before it goes under or gets bought. Well, what about, yeah. what about, okay, what about uh, uh, those, uh, what, what are they called? Um, lending. Credit union? Credit unions. Mm, the credit the credit unions honestly operate under the same system with a different name as the FDIC. There's the N- right. There's FDIC insured, uh-huh. and then there's the NCUA something something insured. Blah blah blah. Right. It's still the same thing. It, you know, so it's it's not as if that the credit unions maybe aren't more honest, but the problem is is that it still relies upon a a, a centralized currency. That comes down to being ones and zeros. That is backed up by bonds, which are essentially no, ones and zeros. That's not necessarily the credit union's fault, though. They're, they're just no, it, it's not their fault. But, but it's it's like well, saying one of the um, better things about them, though, is that they are nonprofit. You know, any any uh, profit they make, they uh, are given better rates to their holders, mm-hmm. and uh, they're not they're never going to be publicly traded. So they're they're not trying to just inflate their their stock market price. They, they don't have that incentive. So. Those are just a couple of advantages that credit unions have over traditional banks. Fair, but doesn't San Diego Credit Union didn't didn't San Diego Credit Union disallow uh, Ali from getting a account though? Yeah, because he yeah. supported marijuana legalization. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, a uh, That's fucked up. Uh, a friend of mine was running for mayor of Encinitas a couple of years back. Um, his is name, Alex then? He, yeah, his name his name is currently Ali. His, uh, at the time, his name was Alex. Um, Al- Alex Fiddle. And, um, yeah, he applied uh, for a bank account as part of running for mayor. You need to have a bank account to file your, you know, your nonsense. Like, oh, you've got a $50 <laughs> check. You've got a write a note to the county register of voters because you got a $50 check, blah, blah, blah. So he, you know, was trying to open a bank account for this, and uh, he goes to a credit union because he didn't want to deal with the bank. Uh, Admiral Biso, he specifically said, I'm going to a credit union. And they declined it because his platform said, uh, I advocate the legalization of marijuana. And they're like, oh, well, 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 no, no, we can't it give you a bank board, account. Man. Man. It reflects yeah. the, the current board. 
you know, but that's the cool thing about credit unions because you can get like on the board. <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean? Right. I mean? Now that you get on the board, then that kind of nonsense can be, yeah, done away with. But which you, I don't think you can't. You really can't do in like the Wells Fargo. No, <laughs> unless, no you're, you're not, unless you're like, in the business and the up and up. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you're a politician. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm like they're whatever. Well, to, to, to show you how like how crazy the 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 situation right. when it comes to uh, the stock exchange, economics, banks, and all that, because it's all tied together. The I you know you could almost guarantee it that the current CEO of whatever bank, be it Wells Fargo. J.P. Morgan Chase, Citibank, um, fourth one, somebody, tell me. Uh, Bank of America. Uh, Bank of America, yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, uh, the CEO only has probably less than 1% of the actual stock of the company. So to say that, like, you know, oh, I'm going to buy a whole bunch of stocks and, you know, change this. No, you're not. The guy who is the CEO of the company probably owns less than one percent of the company like that's how wild it's gotten like there's no real human involvement in it, it it's it's not so nutty wild nonsense you if you know? have a mutual aid you probably own part of what's the thing the banks right? the banks yeah the, the, the banks. banks finance the wars you know mm -hmm. the, 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 the federal income tax you know you, know, you, you get most jobs unless you're getting paid another way you're having to go Yes, it's bad. They pay yes. so much money. Legally speaking, we all pay taxes on all the money that we receive. Sure, right. sure, yeah, yeah, all right, yeah, 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 yeah dude, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. I concur. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it's just it's a crying shame. And then, and then and the way the what does the banks do, like? Create money out of nothing. Create money out of nothing. Mm -hmm. They finance all these wars. Mm -hmm. they, and then they get money on them. We pay them, 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 them back. That's the central banking activity. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, this is true. Yeah, I, 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 I mean, I, you can kind of guess that the, uh, a bunch of libertarians are going to talk about banking. We're going to spend most of the time talking about central banks. But, <laughs> you and know, so, here's yeah. the thing I'm trying to tie together is that, like, okay, so because after. Well, because how did it work before? Because, like, the central bank mm -hmm. at the moment, the Federal Reserve, is a privately owned, you know, uh, you know, banking institution that's in charge of, you know, dist distributing the, the currency for the United States, the sort of backing currency of the world, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a corporation, right? Yes. And so, a yes. corporation before the 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 lawyers used the what amendment was it after the 14th. Civil War, Fourteenth Amendment, to apply to corporations. Before that, that you know, corporations were contracted. It was all very there were, their there, existence. There, there was a time could, limit for how time long limits existed, and, yeah. and limits yeah. to how much they could earn, and they couldn't you know cause harm and damage, and they had all these very you know a lot of regulations on. Um, as far as corporations are concerned, and then, but after the amendment, that got done away with, and then corporations got the same, you know, rights, liberties, privileges as human beings without all the responsibilities. Without yeah, all the really. responsibilities <laughs> of being, you know, quite a scam. You know, yeah. yeah, and so the Federal Reserve they couldn't exist, right? If if it wasn't for that technicality on you know misapplication of that amendment. Applying to corporations, and so yeah. I feel like fascism in the banks in our current oh, model. Central banking existed before. Exactly, before that's what that. I'm saying, though. So how did that work? If, if are, are you the, sir, yeah, yeah, are you asking before, how, yeah, no, how no, banking works? No, that. how I, I wouldn't say it's correct to say that uh, if the banks didn't incorporate, that there'd be no Fed. But, that's true. Um, I just feel like there's so much fascism wrapped up in the banks. Well, see, I'll, yeah, I'll, uh, okay, all right. Uh, no, I don't really have a point there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, um, Riley, I'm sorry, you're wrong. Okay, let me, let me switch gears just a little bit. Gotcha. So, free society, uh, would banks hold a, uh, uh, pose a risk to free markets? Since in, in current markets, the banks basically run the commodities. Mm-hmm. 
chase fruits and sets the price on silver. They decide what silver is going to cost. Life masters, <laughs> I'm talking to you. <laughs> so, so do they pose a similar threat in a free society to be yeah. able to do that? Oh yeah, yeah. There, there's, there, there's no, there's no reason uh, because there is not a government in the future. Because at one point in the future, I firmly believe there will not be a government that there will not still be bad people who want power and will do anything to get it. The, the, this whole, the, the, this struggle of humanity between liberty and tyranny is never going to go away. It's not going to just go away. There's going to be times where we're going to be incredibly free, and we've already experienced times as humanity, though we were not alive, where we were under a whole lot more tyranny. Thankfully, I didn't live through the Spanish Inquisition. That happened a long time ago, but... The world was a lot worse. No one ever suspects the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> no one expects the Spanish Inquisition. But we're, we're heading towards, the trend is going towards, we're going to have more liberty in the future. But that doesn't mean there's still not going to be people who what? want power. What makes you say that? Mm, it, okay, it, but, but... Let's get into the destiny of man here. I want to know. In a free society, the banks don't have the use of government force. Right. So would they be able to seize the same amount of power or a similar amount of power? Well, again, if, if you believe in capitalism and in, in, uh, competition, um, it, in word gets out that, hey, this bank is trying to subvert freedom or, or mm -hmm. just, just take a bunch of power for themselves. People leave the bank. I mean, it's as simple as that. You just get the word out and be like, hey, you know, these guys are doing some nefarious things. You get the word out, take the money out of the bank, and take their power out from underneath them. There's a problem. Brett, it just so happens I have a whole bunch of money. What if I write you a billion dollar check to shut the fuck up? You might just shut the fuck up. You may not, though. You may be a moral man. You may say that billion dollars is not worth my own conscience. But the sad fact is, is that there are plenty of people where a billion dollars will sell out their own conscience. You see somebody, what I'm saying? Somebody <laughs> pays me a billion dollars to to shut my mouth. Mm -hmm. What stops me without the without the force of government from taking the billion dollars and then running my mouth anyway? Uh, well, if you ha if they have a billion dollars to get you to not say a word, right? <laughs> They're gonna have a billion dollars to blow your gray matter all over the fucking world. <laughs> See, that's the thing, is that is, your, is standing your moral principles worth your own life? And that is, that is kind of what it comes down to. Okay, so where are we going? Are you willing to put your own life on the line for what you believe is the right thing to do? And, and, and others have done it, sometimes successfully and sometimes unsuccessfully. People have tried to change their own country and have died in an unmarked grave, never to be known of again. Their names disappeared into the, to the abyss. And there are people who we still know who did do the right thing, and we know who they are. But, you know... We're, we're talking about a future free society, though. We're not talking about some guy speaking out against... Government well, in a truly free society, I also doubt that someone can accrue a billion dollars. And I tend to agree with you that at one point or another... Okay, so... Alright, <clears throat> so part of the problem with the banks is is that they are corporations, right? right. Um, now, there's, there's a number of works by um, uh, older uh, libertarians of mindset of like, well, how would a corporation work? In a voluntary society. <laughs> Let me tell you something. There's no way you'd even have a corporation in a voluntary society. Why? Because a corporation is defined by an invisible... As, and you can look in any dictionary, not just a legal dictionary, but a normal dictionary, a corporation is an invisible, intangible creation of the law. It does not exist other than a government says... Here, this is real. Your paperwork, and sign there, here, sign here, give us a check. No, 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 no. You are a corporation. Legal fiction. A legal fiction, exactly. So that now it the the thing is is that without a corporation, the um, economy cannot move as quickly. I'll give it that. That's accurate. The economy cannot move as quickly without the concept of a corporation, but it will move more efficiently. 
Because, well, hey, I just so happens that I have a couple million dollars. Well, I could build this rocket ship to the moon uh, with, uh, you know, a... Um, an old oil barrel, uh, some duct tape, silly putty, and we're going to put a match to it and see if we can launch this thing up in space. You're probably not going to do that because the people on top of that device, whatever you may want to call it, are going to die. And their family is going to be very upset with you. And you're going to probably end your, end your days on a shack and, you know, on a godforsaken beach somewhere. What's the real question? Yeah, so the okay. So <laughs> the real thing yeah, 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 no, 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 so, so, Android. Yeah, no, no. So I was picking up what well, you were putting down. Right, right. Okay. So the real question is <laughs> is all right, so uh, could a bank grant you a loan to oh. buy a robot that, you know, may or may not perform sexual favors to your every want and desire? Would a, would a bank approve that loan? Was that something to be like, oh yeah, that that's a loanable amount. I will give you a loan. You saying robot sex is it possible in the future? Uh, is that what you I mean, I don't know. I'm not sure. I kind of think it is, but without the idea of a bank, I don't mind. Can we? Uh, I don't know if that's a future I want to live in. <laughs> <laughs> I got lost. And with that, we're gonna say goodnight.